Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College, where we prepare you for a different world. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Q Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time Way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. Mama 
yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, uh. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention. Yes, Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment. So we have none other than Kyle Mosley in the building to try to give us a little help to see if we can get it done today for the people. With that being said, we have none other than Charles Bishop. Gentlemen, how you doing today? Charles, how you doing today? No, well, Doc, of course, I, I encourage everybody. I voted. Get out there and go vote before the polls close. So make sure you get that done today if you have not already voted. I certainly support that. I got my vote in. I made sure I went to early voting. I went to first day. I wanted to check it off to make sure I got it in. But I know some people like to go on the day and make sure they get in there and click it. Kyle Mosley, how you doing today? <laughs> Great. First, thank you for inviting me on uh, with you guys. Uh, you know, I'm back again. I, I don't know what I did to be able to deserve this honor, Doc, but thank you so much. <laughs> you and Charles, uh, is the royalty of, uh, of HBCU sports, so thank you so much. <laughs> Man, you, you just, you're just nice to me. Sometimes it's good to be nice to you. <laughs> it, it, well, look, man, my mama taught me right. Taught me right, man. <laughs> there so. <you> go. <laughs> There you go. This is Dr. Gaville inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Welcome to episode 328 of the Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports. For institutions large and small, from the NIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBC Sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta, for a long while, co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As I said, today we have none other than adjunct Professor Kyle Mosley in the building. <laughs> We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. KCH 30 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, multi-Hall of Famer, that is Ralph Cooper. Kyle, you know a little bit about Ralph Cooper. You've seen him hanging around here trying to do his things. You know, he had that big cape on this past weekend as he was doing the doobies <laughs> over there in uh at mini Maid. yeah yeah watching the astros get it done i said oh now he want to come out his honeycomb hole do his thing i mean but you know when you the czar like that yeah, man, both yeah. Home, man, you can do it like this some people got to do that yeah you but know he was, he was, fly, he was flying in and Houston flying Houston. out yeah Go you're ahead. Right. what were you saying he was flying in and flying out man and all of a sudden i you know, we're in the press box at the Texas Southern Jackson State game, and all of a sudden I looked around, like, there he was sitting next to me. <laughs> then he flew <laughs> back over to Mini May for a little bit, came back, you know, to kind of finish things off at the game. But uh, you know how Coop is, man. He's a great mentor. Yes, he is. Yeah, that yes, sounds man. like him. That sounds like him. That sounds just like him and what you will get done. With that being said, let's get into some of this HBCU news of the week. Let me start with you, Charles. What's on your mind? Yeah, let's go to the Football Weekly Honors. We'll start in the slack. Uh, big weekend for a couple of Grambling uh, players, Alabama State and Jackson State, all represented. But let's take a look at it. The SWAC is named Grambling State's Maurice Washington and Joshua Reed, along with Alabama State's Santo Dunn and Jackson State's Sivion Wilkinson as the SWAC football players of the week for their impressive performance this past week. Let's take a look on the offensive side of the ball, Maurice Washington. Breakout game for Grambling in their 36 to 10 win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. He goes for 10 carries, 201 yards. He scored on runs of 75 and 56 yards 
In addition, he averaged 20.1 yards per rushing attempt. On the defensive side of the ball, Joshua Reed, he pays Grandma State's defense in that 36-10 win. He registered, get this, Doc, 14 total tackles, including eight solo stops. In addition, he contributed three and a half sacks for a loss of 12 yards. Specialist Santo Dunn, he helped Alabama State special teams unit account for 20 of the Hornets 37 points against Bethune Cookman this past weekend. He contributed 137 combined yards, uh, return yards. Uh, he uh, returned two punts for 95 yards, including a 70 yard for a touchdown. And the newcomer of the week, Sidney Ruckelson, he rushed for a career high 214 yards to go along with two touchdowns during Jackson State's 41 to 14 win over Texas Southern. It was Wilkinson's third 100 yard rushing game of the season and his second two rushing touchdown game of the season. So Wilkinson's 200 yard rushing game is the first by a Jackson State player since 2019 when Keyshawn Harper did it. Nice man, accolades and kudos to the SWAT players of the week. Yeah, Wilkinson man, he's he's nice, he's nice. Um, we've seen that all year long with a lot of running backs really putting up some yards over the last decade, you know, we were so used to, you know, quarterbacks and maybe some yeah. wide receivers putting up got it numbers. And now it's turned around where you have the running backs putting up some really good numbers. So I'm fascinated to see how long that trend will carry on. Let me go to you, Professor Mosley. Uh, what HBCU news is on your mind today? Well, basically, man, I think what's really happening now in – HBCU landscape as far as how these conference races are shaping out. And, you know, we have the SIAC championship that's going to take place with Benedict and uh, Tuskegee, man, that's going to be a, a really good match between those two, um, you know, very story programs as well as the institutions themselves. Uh, Benedict has been a surprise, man. Uh, Charles, uh, what do you think about what's happening with those guys? Yeah, I mean, Benedict has been the, the surprise, I think, of SIAC when you take a look at uh, what they brought. A.D. Drew talked about, you know, uh, not only do they have offense, but they have uh, a top-ranked defense in the SIAC, and they have turned heads. They've gone undefeated. Tennis Berry has really taken that program to new heights, so you can't say enough about Benedict as they will be the representative in the SIAC championship game. One yeah, of the representatives. One of the representatives, and Tuskegee, you know, Coach Ruffin's there. Doc, I mean, uh, you can't get any better than he. So, I mean, look at this, this matchup. And I know in South Carolina, it's going to be a pretty good uh, time for all the people involved. But I am really impressed with both of the programs and what they have been able to do, especially turning around that Benedict program from several years ago, being in the cellar of the SIEC. Yeah, great points when you talk about that. And we'll take a deep dive on Thursday where we get into that SIC matchup. But that's certainly big news of the week when you're talking about those teams in there. New players, obviously, Tuskegee, as you know, coming out of the SIC from Morehouse, yes. uh, one of the grandfathers to the conference, and they certainly have their share of championships. They lived in the championship game a decade or so ago, but most lately it's been Miles College, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so you talked about roughing. And he lived in, <laughs> in the championship game. And it makes sense, even though he's now the head coach and AD and will be the AD moving forward as a new coach to come in on the green iron, it makes sense he goes out of style, at least from the Western Division, and he finds himself back into the SIC championship game. So big news, great points that you make there, and it'll be fascinating to take that deeper dive. Charles, let me go back to you for some more news. You got MEAC Players of the Week. Yeah, I got MEAC Players of the Week. I'm going to get to that. And let me say this real quick. Chivalry is not dead. Wanted to mention Jackson State's women winning the soccer championship uh, this past weekend over Grandma's exciting overtime game. Uh, that game uh, went in overtime on a, on a kick with, with Grambling scoring in the very final seconds of that uh, game. But Jackson State able to pull it out in overtime. And they will take on number one ranked Alabama uh, in the soccer uh, playoffs, if you will. So looking forward to uh, Jackson State uh, representative of the sweat. Man, Grambling, boy, they just can't quite get over the hump. Overtime last year, Prairie gets it done at all. They come <laughs> back, get to the championship game, score late, and say, well, maybe it's just our time in our year. Jackson State, no, we 
done this the regular season. We're going to finish the deal. And they did it in grand fashion. And kudos to the Tigers of Jackson State for the women's soccer program. Big time, big time. Fascinating to see that go on. Man, kudos to them. Like yeah. that. Stick with you for the MEAC players of the week. Go ahead and give that news, and then we'll come back to Mosley, see if he has some other news that he wants to share on the sure ACC. Let's take a look at the MEAC players of the week. North Carolina Central Virginia quarterback Davis Richard was named MEAC Offensive Player of the Week. Delaware State sophomore linebacker Aiden Weber and South Carolina State redshirt junior defensive end Patrick Godbold were named the co-defensive players of the week, uh, while Delaware State kicker Nathan Wilson and was named Rookie of the Week, and North Carolina Central Red Shirt senior Zai Simpson was the offensive lineman of the week. Let's take a look on the offensive side of Ball Davis Richards, 6'3", 215 from Bell Blade, racked up 385 yards of total offense and accounted for five touchdowns in the Eagles' homecoming win over Howard. He needed just 13 completions to record 281 yards through the air thrown for three touchdown passes while rushing seven times for 104 yards and two scores. Two of the three touchdown passes went for at least 64 yards. Let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball. Aiden Weber recorded 11 tackles, nine solo at South Carolina State as he also racked up four tackles for a loss for a total of nine yards as the Hornets picked up their first win on the road against the Bulldogs since 2007. Doc. And Patrick Garbo. He had eight tackles, seven solo, including four for loss, totaling 13 yards and a sack against Delaware State. He also forced a fumble, broke up a pass, and recorded an interception. So those are your offensive and defensive players of the week over there in the MEAC. Man, they're having some fun over there in the MEAC, man. They know how to keep things interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Delaware State, South Carolina State says we're going bowling. Delaware State Hornets says not so fast. Over. Man, overtime to make sure they get the hearts <laughs> yeah. from the Bulldogs. And you have North Carolina Central, if they put up a 50 spot against the Bison, said, oh, yeah, they clap. we be like, yo, we like this. this we like this. <laughs> 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 you say, what is that going on over there? So two straight losses for the Bulldogs, and they firmly put it back in the hands of Central. Central only has one more game, as we talked about on Sunday. Can they close out and lock up the bid? Uh, the tiebreakers came out on the MEAC. I'll share this a little bit, then I go to you both and see what, what, else, what else you want to share. Uh, but, man, uh, MEAC outlines 2022 football tiebreaker scenarios with the MEAC, and it really goes into detail, put it that way. Uh, I'll give a couple of them. If North Carolina Central defeats Norfolk State and Howard loses to either South Carolina State or Morgan State, North Carolina Central, the Eagles win the MEAC title outright and goes to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. North wow. Carolina Central defeats Norfolk State and Howard wins out. North Carolina Central and Howard are declared co-champions. The North Carolina Central goes to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Wow. Norfolk State defeats North Carolina Central. It gets a little interesting. Morgan State wins out. And South Carolina State loses to either Howard or Norfolk State. North Carolina Central, Morgan State are declared co-champions. North Carolina Central still goes. It takes the fact that if Norfolk State defeats Central, you have South Carolina State wins as well as Morgan State. Then you get a North Carolina Central, Morgan State, South Carolina State declared champions. North Carolina Central still goes. So most of the ways here, Central goes no matter what happens here. Unless Norfolk State defeats North Carolina Central, South Carolina State wins out, and Howard defeats Morgan State, then you have North Carolina Central, Howard and South Carolina State are declared co-champions. South Carolina State goes to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. So it's a really? lot of things that have wow. to get South Carolina Chaos. State there. But it is, it is possible. <laughs> but most scenarios here, whether it's outright championship, co-championship, tri- or way championship, Central goes. There's one other way where South Carolina goes, and I'll put this out there, which is the last one that they have as a top breaker if North Oak State defeats North Carolina Central. Delaware State defeats Morgan State. South Carolina State wins out, and Howard defeats Morgan State. Then you have a four-way tie. North Carolina Central, Howard, Delaware State, South Carolina State are all declared co-champions, but South Carolina State Bulldog goes to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. They got some tiebreaker systems, but, hey, about seven ways Central goes, so 
They can make it easy, they can make it interesting, but more yeah. likely it's the Eagles of North Carolina Central. That's well, amazing to me. Well, look, Doc and Charles, <laughs> the way the these this season has been going, it will be interesting. You you might have one of these log jams like that. You gotta do uh all the convoluted ways to um get to the, the championship. But I think Central Kyle is chooses it, Kyle chooses conflict. Yeah, nah, <laughs> nah, man. Look, they just gotta Central has to do what they have to do. And I think they're in the driver's seat That's right true. now. They, they you know, have to just go ahead and just win the game and let's just be done and wash your hands of all that other convoluted <laughs> <laughs> type of uh, scenario. You, you know, some people are rooting for chaos this weekend. They are rooting hard for Norfolk State just to see these tiebreaker scenarios and see what can happen. <laughs> Look, man, right. I, I, right. Norfolk, I was kind of surprised with break. them a little bit, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Before we take this break, uh, go ahead, get into maybe your last thought there, and then we'll get in and take our break. Yeah, look, we can't forget about the CIAA and Fayetteville. They're making their fifth trip back to the championship game against Shawn. And, you know, it's going to be one of these um, – old time throw down classic games. Uh, I think Fayetteville is kind of uh, relieved that they don't have to go against <laughs> Bowie State this year <laughs> again. <laughs> and, and this might be their time to really get over the hump and be able to claim that championship for themselves. So uh, it's going to be a great time in Salem Stadium down in Salem, Virginia. And uh, on Saturday afternoon, the championship for the CIWA is going to take place. Yeah, I like it. Great point when we talk about Fayetteville State gets a different opponent. Uh, they had the tough loss to Virginia early, and Chowan beat Virginia Union, so they don't have to worry about Virginia Union. As you said, they couldn't get over the hurdle of Blue yeah. State. This year, they don't have to worry about it. Somebody else, will they finally get a chance? Or will the Hawks say, nah, we like the North over here. Y'all just say bribes, man. We'll take it from here. Uh, It'll be fast to say what's going on there. <laughs> Rooting for the bridesmaid to finally put the bride dress on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Broncos baby. better do what they have to do. Just like the Eagles. Do what you have to do, baby. That's all you have to do. Just win. That's it. Just win. That's it. Meet it done. <laughs> Pack Swag Legacy Series game set for national stage. It'll be interesting to see what that has, both on the men's and women's side. November 11th, men's Colorado at Grambling. November 13th, men's Arizona State at Texas Southern. Um, that'll be this Sunday. Uh, Friday was the men's game. November 14th, you have women, Oregon at Southern. And with 15th, the men's, you have Washington State at Prairie View. Uh, in December 1st, women, you have Utah at Mississippi Valley State. It's fascinating to see. Those games will all be on ESPN Plus as well as Pac-12 Network. So we'll keep our eyes on those games. With that, we'll be right back after this break. We'll get into the poll rankings and let you know what went down if there are any and all changes that take place. We'll get these professors to tell them, tell me what their thoughts are the poll. And obviously all our viewers and listeners out there, you can tell me what your thoughts are too. Another week in the swag as we are churning through this football season. We are week yeah. 10 getting into week 11. Man, things are just going too fast for me. I just yeah. remember when we were in Birmingham for the SWAC media football press conference, all excited and giddy and couldn't wait till they hit the field. Wow. Yeah. It's almost yeah. over, man. I it's tell almost you, over. I tell you. Let's get into this first break. We'll be right back on the other side. Stick with us as we get into the second quarter. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers voice time and time again. Conversational powerhouse intelligent and sincere that's the voice you need for your creative marketing process k-e-a-v-e-r-s-v-o-i-c-e.com covers voice covers voice covers voice.com always on all the time from novice to aficionado find yourself here high quality cigars plus personal customer service Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. 
Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Neil with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and Kyle T. Mosley in the building. I'm going to see if he gets to continue to hold that mic after I give him my mid-major and major division poll rankings. We'll see what he has to say. No, I'm just kidding there. You know, tell us how you feel. For real. Oh, no, no, no. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Doc. Let's go. Let's see what you got. Let's get into this mid-major poll. Let's see about these teams that are dropping out and receiving votes. Let's start here. Dropping out of the poll this week, the Lane Dragons, 5-5 five and five on the season, 4-3 and three as they drop out of the polls uh, to end their regular season. Uh, receiving votes, all those Lane Dragons, pretty solid season, 5-5, five and 4-3. Five, and three. Uh, We're right in the mix playing Tuskegee late in the season. Got that huge upset over Tennessee State on the road. Uh, it's something that certainly – to hang your hat on. Let's get into the top 10. We have a new team in the top 10 as Lane dropped out. Who jumps in? West Virginia State, the Yellow Jackets, six and four on the season, five and two. They were not ranked. They get 15 points to jump into the poll. Bring us to number nine. Number nine is Bowie State Bulldogs. Remember, they were the national champions this year, coaching changes, uh, both all over the field, players transferring out. Uh, pretty solid season. But a lot went in a different direction. They finished at six and four in the regular season, five and three, 19 points, moving up one spot after a big win last week. And number eight, Langston Lions, six and three, five and three, winning season, but uh, had a tough loss uh, this past weekend, nine and seven. It was tricky. It looks like their postseason hopes are all but over, but they finished in the top 10, 24 points here at number eight as they stay there. At number six, Seven, Virginia State Trojans, six and four, five and three. They fall this weekend to the power of Virginia Union, but certainly a good season for first year coach Dr. Henry Fisher, the third, taking over the program. He finishes at six and four, five and three, 37 points. They stay at number seven. Finishing out the bottom five is number six, Albany State, Golden Ram, seven and three, mm. five and two. Some people would say this was upset. Yeah. Um, certainly not the type of season they would have. 49 points, finishing at three. They dropped three spots in the Fountain City Classic. Boy, I tell you, they get dropped by Fort Valley State, which brings us to number five. In the top five is none other than the Robin. Fort Valley State Wildcats finish at eight and two, five and two, 61 points, moving up one spot as they dethrone Albany State and get it done, and they robbed. First time they won that in some time. At number four, Tuskegee Golden Tigers. Yes, they're having a bad season, and they're back in the football business. Had homecoming, uh, went out in classic style overtime, new field Ooh. turf, new stands, <laughs> and boy, they have a lot of people that decided they wanted to see everything. Yeah. yeah. Tuskegee Golden Tigers. <laughs> they got it Eight done. And, and they will play for SIC Championship. 80 points. Eight points. They move up one spot from being five last week, bringing us to number three. Y'all teased out this team a little bit. Fayetteville State Broncos out of the S uh, CIAA, CIAA South, I should say. They're playing for a CIAA championship. They finished the season at eight and two, seven and one, 80 points, and they move up one spot. Can they finally take off the Sumerella Bride slippers and get it done? Bringing us to number two. Virginia Union Panthers, they finish at 9-1. and one. Their loss is to the team. Chowan, that will play for a CIAA. No, they're not ranked. They're not an HBCU, so they're not ranked in this poll. We will talk about them playing in the championship game, certainly as they get a chance to bring home the CIAA crown as well. But Virginia Union has three points, 87 points, and they're looking at their seating to see what they can do. Can they get that bid to the regional Division II playoffs? We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Benedict is number one. Benedict Tigers is the story of the season, as Kyle Mosley said, and they finished at the top of the poll without a loss. 10 and 0 undefeated thus far this season. 8 0 in conference play. I should say 6 0, 7 first place votes, 99 points. They are the number one team in the poll rankings. 
let's go to our guest first, as I know Charles is smiling over there, so I'm going to make him wait a little <laughs> bit. We're going to let Kyle Mosley get in here and tell me, what do you think of Dr. Bill's mid-major HBCU football poll for week number 10? I don't have a problem with it, man. Doc, I think you're on point with it, to be you're honest. You're a very with smart you. man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course <laughs> but look, man, Albany, that was a surprise, you know. And I had a chance twice to, to visit with um, Coach Jardina and just to see them fall. And, and, and they've had some classic battles with Fort Valley late, right? So, yeah. That was a surprise that they have come down thus far to uh, number six. But, of course, uh, Virginia Union and Benedict, they've been playing very good uh, football, man. And uh, I'm glad that uh, the Panthers are back up there. Uh, But I I really – I have to just keep on repeating this, man. Tuskegee has really surprised me as well as Benedict. And I think it's going to be a classic affair this past, this uh, upcoming weekend uh, for the championship game. So, Doc, I like your poll. Yes, sir. Hit it. Charles, what do you say, ye? You know, as much as I want to jump Tuskegee over Fayetteville State, you know, I, I had to kind of just kind of take a look at the statistics in terms of uh, if there was a matchup between Tuskegee and Fayetteville State, who would come out on top. And when you kind of look at, go through the statistics, you know, Tuskegee has gotten it done in a plethora of ways. They really aren't uh, one of the top offenses in the SIC, not one of the top defenses in the SIC. They've done it in a plethora of ways. But at Fayetteville State defense, tops in the CIAA, only yielding 12 points per game. I, I, I don't have a problem with them sitting there at number three, but, you know, both teams, eight and two records, Tuskegee 7-0 in SIAC play. Ooh, that would be an interesting matchup to see, you know, what would happen between Tuskegee and Fayetteville State. We'll never know, but it's curious to just look at how similar uh, they are uh, with regards to uh, conference records and, and overall record. But I think Fayetteville State will be able to get them. You can't say enough about Benedict, top offense, uh, in the CIAA, 31 points per game. Also the top defense, CIAA. Uh, I'm sorry, in the SIC. They've they, they gotten it done. They've gotten it done all season. I call him the fighting Chinese Bears. He has flipped that program <laughs> into a winner. It is going to be a raucous crowd when they play for that SIC championship. I love it. Great points both of you made. And y'all agree with the polls. So, you know, yeah. what can I say? I'm, I'm the man of the people. With that being said, <laughs> <laughs> Now we may you now oh. doc, we got the majors coming up. Now don't talk too fast now. <laughs> That's true. That does make me a little nervous. And while we get into majors, North Carolina is in the top 10, in the top five. Let me make sure I shout out their player of the week, uh, Nick South, because he played a big game. North Carolina AT linebacker Jacob Roberts from Charlotte, North Carolina, is the defensive player of the week for games played. The 10th week of 2022 regular season, Roberts had a game high 12 tackles. Nine solo, three assisted with one tackle for loss, one pass breakup, and a 22-yard interception return for a what? Touchdown. Touchdown. Six sixes. He got it done as Aggies defeat Norfolk State 49-24 um, as those Carolina teams are putting up these 40s and 50-point spots regular here. But let's get into the major division. As Kyle says, he wants to see what I do with the mates. Yeah. Well, dropping out this week. In the major division in week 10 is Hampton Pirates, four and five ah, on lady. the season, <laughs> one and five. They've dropped five straight after winning their first conference game. It hasn't been going very really well, but credit to them. They did play William Mary's really close. One of the teams that are doing pretty well in the Colonial uh, went down to the end and they lost by less than uh, uh, a touchdown. I think it was 20 to 14, if I'm not mistaken there. So they are receiving votes, but uh, they've fallen on hard time. Four and five, one and five, out 18 points as they look from the outside. You'll see this refrain of some of the bottom teams in the poll that are in with big victories, but losing record. It'd be interesting to see what this looks like at the end of the season. At number 10, you have the sophomore state Braves. Four and five as they get a big win with a sophomore quarterback that goes on the road and gets it done mm. in Prairie View. Three and three mm-hmm. on the season, 21. They were not ranked. They jump in the number 10. Rangers number nine. Texas Southern Tigers, four and five, three and three. They fall one spot, but not out of the poll. 
with 24 points as they continue to get it done. Also losing last week, number eight, Southern Jaguars, 5-4, 3-3, three 29 points. Ranked number seven as they fall a spot. Brings to number seven, Delaware State. They stay at seven. Big win. Delaware State's five and four on the season, three and two and two as they get that upset over South Carolina State. South Carolina State was leading, but they have losing records and not even receiving votes. So while South Carolina State Bulldogs is a tough team, uh, it didn't really help them in the ranking. Bring us to number six to close out the bottom six is Prairie View A&M Panthers, five and four, four and two. Uh, they fall two spots for number four out of the top five at 66 into that final spot. As you see there, anybody want to win the Western Division? I don't know. Is it because people just don't want to see Jackson State? Uh, I can't call it. You got even Barrett talking about backing into a championship. But if I was Barrett, <laughs> even in this new framework of the championship, I, anybody in the West wouldn't fall into it the way they're looking at maybe realigning things in the winter meeting. So I wouldn't say anything about backing into the championship if you losing two straight games. You, you don't really deserve to be there yourself. With that being said, top five program, Alabama State Hornets, and I'm saying that for anybody in the West the way they're playing. Let's look at the top five. Alabama State Hornets, six and three, four and two, 76 points. Move up a spot from number six. They enter back into number five. This is a team surprisingly doing well. Six and three, four and two, 76 points and they just find ways to win. They're in what seems to be the tougher division in the East division in there, in that third spot in terms of where they sit for the final seating, but they got a matchup. It's fam. You this week will be fascinating for all those to watch. I'll find a way to tune in because I don't believe it's on ESPN or HBCU Go. Hmm. Bring us to number four. We get into Carolinas, North Carolina and T State Aggies, six and three, three and oh, started tough, but they're finishing strong. 84 points moving up one spot as they are in that top five at number four. Bringing us number three, North Carolina Central Eagles, seven and two, three and one, eight and nine. Uh, three first place votes have always had a solid season, but they got a huge break uh, as they made their statement against the previous undefeated Howell. But more importantly, they saw Delaware State take down South Carolina State. Boy, did they need it. Now they just have to find a win. One last game in conference play, and they're in Atlanta. Number mm. two, Florida in the rally, seven and two, five and one, 97 points. They take down Southern Jaguars as they get it mm. done, but they go on the road this week and take up another top five team, at least at this point. Last week, Southern was top five in terms of when they saw them, in terms of that. Well, Southern was top 10, I should say, as they had that loss to Jackson when they were top five going back a couple of weeks. But fam, you has beginning to play a pretty solid schedule when you talk about what they've done of late in terms of back-to-back -back wins over winning programs. If they can get it done against Alabama State, Hornet said not so fast. We want to take a statement, and we want to be in that <laughs> second position. We'll see what that means uh, at ASU Stadium this Saturday. At number one, Jack State Tigers, 9-0, 6-0, 12. They just beat anybody that comes in front of them. Uh, and get it done in solid, solid fashion, 120 points. They went Houston and had all the lights and glamour. All yeah. the people, dignitaries were there. Yeah. They show <laughs> the Tigers show out. Boy, I tell you, uh, as they come in the state and style with the state troopers and leave out on the plane as well, boy, I tell you, yeah, they know how to do it. With that being said, let me go to Charles and see smiling and laughing. <laughs> what do you think of the top team? I know you're not well, mad at number one. I, 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 definitely, definitely not mad at number one. Definitely not mad at number one. But no. number two, two and three are very intriguing to me. Who is the number two team? Who is actually the number three team? Uh, is it North Carolina Central that's right there under Jackson State? Or is it FAMU? I mean, both are playing tremendous ball. You take a look at the record, seven and two uh, overall. Uh, FAM five and one, of course, in conference play. is Central three and one. But who is actually – that team that's right there under Jackson State, that's an intriguing uh, look-see in terms of which is the better program at this point in the year. Uh, shout out to Alcorn and Delaware State. Uh, they, they, they they made me look bad this past week. Uh, Alcorn got it done on the road against Prairie View, and Delaware State got it done at South Carolina State's homecoming. So uh, I call those both incorrectly uh, when you take a look at everything that was on the line with regards to those two games. So uh, big wins on the road for both of those teams. But uh, two and three, ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. 
Good points. Good points. Let me go see what Kyle T. Mosley has to say about the major division top 10 as Jackson State is number one for the 10th consecutive week. Do you have questions about two and three or are you comfortable with what's on? No, I'm com- comfortable comfortable with Tyler. Coach Pride as well as those <laughs> Tigers. They, you know, they they brought it. They brought it. Look, we can't deny that Jackson State is the, the best HBCU squad thus far until they win this celebration bowl, right? Um I do wonder if FAMU has another go around, what type of game they could be able to play Jackson State. Uh, but that's a woulda, coulda, shoulda. Ain't gonna happen. The interesting part of the poll maybe, is maybe next year in 2023. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all ears to hear about uh, this <laughs> new system that you, you have yeah. kind of put out there, teased us with, Dr. Yeah, they, <laughs> well, okay. Hey, Kyle, they got a shot in 2023. Oh, all right, all right. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see if uh, Big Willie is gonna still be there in fam, you right. Because he's been rumored for some uh, uh, other type of positions in the FBS. So, you know, so mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, so, mm-hmm. look, I, I think North Carolina Central Great is deserving. I'm not too sure of the Aggies, though. I think if you go toe-to-toe, mm. I think Alabama State could really put some uh, hurt on those guys at the Aggies. That's just my Ooh. opinion. I will move. That's what you're here into, for. It's your opinion. Yeah, I will put them into the fourth position. I'm gonna send all the Aggies your way, though. I'm about uh, to say, are you? I'm gonna turn them loose on you, guy. Well, look, uh, Coach <laughs> Washington it ain't gonna have me around. I gotta, I gotta do one of those Travis Hunter type moves <laughs> against those guys. You know? But uh, now, nah, man, I, I really like Oof. the top five. You see me now? You don't? Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, so now you see me now? You don't? Now, now you see me now you don't man you gotta put that little juke on them but I, I tell you what man i'm very disappointed in pv because they had a prime position to really mm-hmm. take a stranglehold on that division man they still can win and you know if you look at texas southern they still have an opportunity to win for one sh- way shape or form but uh i think pv if they really take Here's another team. If you take care of business this weekend, you don't have to worry about all the other stuff, right? So I think right now, PV and Jackson are headed for a rematch in the 2022 SWAC championship game. Um, You know, so get your popcorn ready. I think it's going to be these guys once again. And, uh, but I think Jackson State, showed and proved that uh, to a lot of people, especially in the Houston area, that they are an elite team all in all. And they take advantage of the situations that are presented to them. So, um, but Texas Southern, man, (laughs) I just have to say this. I I really would like to see the Tigers utilize Andrew Body's talents a little bit better. And uh, I think he has a lot of uh, good qualities that need to be uh, enhanced. And, you know, if the right system, right approach to help him out, I think Andrew Body could do a lot better. Uh, they weren't able to sustain drives. You know, was it three out of 13, 14, 15 on 18. third downs? Yeah, that was three, pretty three bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. So uh, it was 18%, 13% or something like that, I calculated. But, um, and to see the fall from Southern to Jaguars, man, that's that's pretty uh, interesting what's happening with Eric Dooley and his program as well. Yeah, great points you make in terms of those teams that have hit the slide button. I told you, who wants to win the West is the question of the day. With that saying, we'll be right back with this break on the other side. We'll get into what should be mid-major games, but because you got the championship games, we'll focus on those on Thursday. And we're going to give you a little substitute and go into some major division games in place of what we usually do our mid-major segment. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break, and we'll get into it. So, so. 
Shop Velvet Online Women's Boutique to spice up your closet with trendy, unique looks. We have fashionable and chic looks at very affordable prices. Velvet Boutique offers free shipping all year long on all orders. Shop online at www.melvetboutique.com. That's www.melvetboutique.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Shop Melvet Online Women's Boutique. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Mm. This is Dr. Gaville with this, at the HBC Sports Lab with Professor Bishop, Professor Mosley. Let's get into what usually is our mid-major games a week. As I said, they're in championship, so we'll save that detail for Thursday. As we go over the SIEC championship, the CIAA championship, um, and let's get into the, some major games. We're going to talk about the first one uh, is Prairie View traveling to Pine Bluff. Uh, as you talk about a Saturday 2 o'clock game in the Western Division, and as you alluded to, Prairie View has it in their hands. This is a must-win game. Prairie View is number six, five and four, four and two at Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. They've had a troubling season, hadn't won since their uh, early part of the season made a coaching change uh two and seven oh and six in the conference race can they get the big upset at home this week starting with you mosley what are your thoughts no i <laughs> just no. they will not get the upset um i and no disrespect to <laughs> just coach. take out all the surprise yeah no, i'm, I'm sorry no it's <laughs> not going to happen uh i love Mark Evans, the second, number one. Uh, he's a great young talent, the, the left tackle from uh, Pine Bluff. Uh, Coach Treadwell and those guys, they just have a, a, a – they have too many obstacles in front of them at this time. Uh, I think this is a situation where the Panthers are going to be focused and they're going to go in, take care of business, and win the game and also try to come up on top of the Eastern Division. Western Division. Go Western, ahead, oh, man, uh, Western Division. I apologize. Uh, we, uh, it happens. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, this is must win for, for Prairie View. Uh, when you take a look at UAPB, it's a program in a tailspin right now. And, uh, you know, basically when all the chat around UAPB is who is going to be the next head coach and you're starting to take a look at head coaching candidates, this is where PB has to come in and pounce, take the game over early and go ahead and get the W. Um, but uh, you've got to uh, you know, knock out UAPB early and, and not let them get any momentum whatsoever uh, while they're playing at home. So I think Prairie View will get this one in a big way. You said that you got to get into this early and not allow a team to get any momentum by sticking around. So great point when you talk about that. I think the other thing is the fact that they get 
Antoine back as he didn't play last Friday. Uh, he's mm. really a big time running back when you have the two, Stewart and Antoine together. They right. seem to make more of a difference. So we'll see what that looks like in terms of that matchup. Let's go to the MEAC in terms of a bonus game. This one is different in terms of what it could mean because it has all the coulda, woulda, shoulda type matchups here. It's in Washington, D.C., William H. Studd Green Stadium. Uh, always a tough matchup between the two. Uh, lately, South Carolina State obviously has gotten the better of it, but you come in this matchup, you have South Carolina State Bulldogs at three and six, one and two, at Howard Bison, three and six, two and one. I think the question of the day is here is who can rebound? Who mm. wants to still play football in a lot of ways and mm. sees this important because I think that's going to go a long way in this matchup. Going and starting with you, Charles, staying with you, if you would, what are your thoughts in terms of this bonus matchup we're giving for the VA? Yeah, same situation as with Purdy. Uh, Howard has to take care of business. They've got to get this W over three and six South Carolina State team at home, and then they have to get the win at Morgan State, and then they have to put on their Spartan helmet and root like heck for Norfolk State. So uh, you still have something to play for. So I, I expect for them to play with their back up against the wall and take care of business against South Carolina State. South Carolina State, unfortunately, uh, this has not been their season. It's been uh, Shaq or nothing. And, I, you know, that's been the story of the South Carolina State of offense this season. So uh, you got to go with Howard in this one. You're right. Shaq is a problem, but that is probably the pro biggest problem. It's Shaq or nothing. Yeah. Going to you, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Mosley, uh, you followed this because your Morehouse played yeah. Howard earlier in New York this year. But now um, Howard is at home. Some people would say finally because the first five, some games, six games, they played on the road. This is their second home contest. Is it going to be enough to make a difference against a really South Carolina State Bulldogs team? What, do you, what are your thoughts on this matchup? It's hard for me to believe that the old ball coach is going to go down his final couple games, right? And I really believe that Buddy Peary is going to have these guys ready. Uh, the problem with Howard is, just like the, they had with Morehouse, it was 0-0 at halftime. It wasn't until they decided to come out and just turn it up in second half that they made Morehouse look, you know, inept. <laughs> so uh, I, I really have to say this. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a tightly contested game, but I believe that South Carolina State will win. Good one. Good call. Let's go into our last break. We'll come back and give you some major division classic and the independent matchup. Teams that are playing well, we'll get to talk about them against opponents that are not playing so well. We'll see if there's any upsets in the making. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break as we get into some of these major division classes where we look at Jackson State and Aggies in the top five and look at the matchups of teams that are not and see what these gentlemen think about these games of the week. Singles, we'll be right back as we come back in the fourth quarter and give you more. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. We are making Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya, yeah. and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and Kyle T. Mosley as they break down some of these major division games. You got uh, Stephen J. Gaither acting bad out there. <laughs> me act where anything is possible. <laughs> Man, I know it's the holiday season's coming up, and you got the jingle jangle uh, that came out where they had the song in there where anything is possible. I guess he's bringing that back. Uh, 
with the Morgan State alum that wrote that out of the MEAC. I guess that twist kind of goes together there. The MEAC, where anything is possible. Boy, I tell you, you're not <laughs> right, Stephen Gates. Leave these people alone. They're going to come and find you. Oh, with that being goodness. said, let's get into this major class. Kyle looks like we lost Doc there for a quick second, but uh, until we get it back up, we'll get into this uh, major classic with Texas Southern and Jackson State. You got an opportunity to see Jackson State up close this past week, man. What are your thoughts? Dominant. <laughs> Just <laughs> as Coach Prime said, you know, they've been dominant, man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Charles, I, I think highly of the program, what they've been able to accomplish the past uh, couple of years, uh, has been very impressive. I mean, think about it. They have the chance to go undefeated in the SWAC two straight seasons. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if a lot of people are ready to appreciate what they're doing mm -hmm. and really understand the, the history that's being made here uh, for this type of uh, role that uh, Coach Prime and the Tigers are on. So uh, going forward, man, I really... I'm kind of uh, having early withdrawals because I want to see more football going on. <laughs> I'd like to see more of these guys and see more of what's going to happen in SWAT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you take a look at Alabama and &M, they're coming off of uh, this loss in Mississippi Valley State uh, on primetime. Uh, it, it's going to be, I think, tough. Uh, and you take a look at Alabama and &M, I believe defensively they're 10th in the SWAT, and now you get – Jackson State coming in to see them, uh, number one offense in the swag, uh, number one defense in the nation. Uh, it's going to be tough sledding. Uh, what do you think might be the keys uh, for Alabama and m to, to try to get something going in this game against Jackson State? Yeah, number one, pray. Uh, number two, <laughs> <laughs> pray all day. Uh, yeah. but no, uh, and listen, to be honest with you, man, you have to play a perfect game. And it was much like how uh, Texas Southern had to really do the same thing this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Alabama a and is, uh, you know, losing a quill glass it was a, a monstrous loss for them, you know, uh, to be able to have that talent and have somebody at the quarterback position is uh, really what you see in Shadour Sanders now, right? Mm -hmm. If you can, ha can have that steady, consistent performer and you could be able to go far. Sure. But uh, I think right now there's so many inconsistencies. Uh, they, uh, the turnovers, the miscues have really been uh, damaging to uh, Coach Maynard and his team. So right now, uh, as far as what they're able to do, they have to play a perfect game and they have to be able to execute. And just like uh, what Jackson State's defense did to Texas Southern, they have to find a way to be able to convert third downs. If you cannot sustain drives, there's no way you could be able to put points on the board and get into the opponent's territory. So that's going to be the, the necessities and some of the keys for me if Alabama A&M has a chance against the Tigers. No doubt. It looks like we got Doc back. Doc, uh, you know, Kyle's number one point is for Alabama A&M to get a, a W over Jack State. They got to start by praying. So uh, we move on to, <laughs> to A&T. Oh, I hate to Sun. say it like that, but that, that is pretty much appropriate when you talk about this. You know, just two weeks ago, I was teasing this up from the standpoint, if Alabama A&M would have, should have, could have, again, playing that game, beat Alabama State in the Magic City Classic, run on the road and get Valley, they would have came in here with one loss, and at least it would have looked like, hey, and it's for all the marbles, but you come in here uh, and you're playing a team that is focused. I'm not sure if many people realize that about Jackson State. Um, and the outside noise talks about the fact that, you know, they lost and they did all this. But I think internally they have a lit flame that they want to finish the business. And there's nothing like a team that is focused, um, especially when they're talented um, and people can say what they want. This is a talented Jackson State team. Obviously, if they play North Carolina Central coming out of the MEAC, also a very talented team. It'll be interesting to see with that matchup. They do have whoever comes out of the West first. Mm -hmm. uh, you would imagine whoever comes out of the West uh, will pretty much, for the most part, be on at least a two-game win streak. 
if you yeah. would, some, yeah. wh- whoever does it. Mm-hmm. So you have that type of momentum maybe they can lean on. I don't see it. I think it's yeah. Jackson um, and trying to do what they want to do. So I think you're perfect when you talk about this matchup there. And it's just fascinating, a team that is so focused. Even though they have a lot of noise coming in them and shining and different things, the team itself is staying in focus. So great points made by both of y'all. As I appreciate you, Charles, taking over there. Good points you made there, Mosley. Praying might be the answer that a lot of folks are looking for for the SEC. Yeah, swing low. Go ahead. I say swing low, sweet chariot. You know, (laughs) that's all I can say right there, guys. I'll tell you. Independent matchup. This one, I'm not sure it's going to be very intriguing as well, but A&T is looking for the playoffs. Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. And to take the next step to set up what probably will be the big matchup in terms of next weekend is they got to get it done at home. Truist Stadium, they're playing really good football. Um, Charleston Southern Buccaneers, 2-7 and seven in, out of the Big South, 2-2 two and two in conference play at number four um, in the HBCU rankings that I just told you about early in the show. Uh, A&T State Aggies are 6-3, and 3-0, three, three and oh, really playing some good football right now, and they look like a team that is focused on the mission. Let me stick with you, Mosley. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, Coach Washington has those guys ready. I don't see Charleston being able to, you know, just hang with them. I don't think they have the stamina to be able to hang with uh, the Aggies. So I see the Aggies will come out uh, victorious in this game and uh, hopefully have that shot at the playoffs. I wonder if they can get into that top 25 mix and conversation that continue to win out uh, the rest of the season. Obviously, a little more things that need to get done. They do have automatic bids, so that's a focal point as well. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup of the Big South? Independent HBCU eight and T at home, uh, wanting to get it done against the Buccaneers. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is a game. You got a two and seventeen coming into your house. You got to burnish your resume for the playoffs. You got to hit a fly with a sledgehammer. You got to put up a number against Charles and Southern as you go into uh, the final few weeks of the season and turn that defense loose on Charles and Southern and, and, and let them go, man. And I tell you what, I think the Aggies are playing some top-notch football right now. Uh, when you take a look at BAM, North Carolina Central, North Carolina NT, uh, if there was no Jackson State, boy, we would have a lot of fun talking about those three teams. <laughs> Is that the way you're going to leave it today? I got this <laughs> all about Jackson State Tigers. Wow. Uh, I'm just, I'm just look, look I, I'm surprised he didn't say Deion Sanders. You know, he's been leaving our Coach Prime's name. I, I, I've said it enough for you today, Charles. So, but, you know. I'm just putting it out there. Those are some great, those are some great teams. Great team. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are. No doubt about it. When you, when you say it, as Charles loves to say, he, uh, he has me thinking in their mindset right now with the way things are going. I would like to say this seriously. Um, it's good to hear that they apprehended the suspect yeah. uh, that oh, uh, committed the fires in Jackson State. Um, and um, it's sad to hear if uh, it is a, a young man that actually at one time uh, went to another HBCU institution. I won't even put it out there because it's such negative light. But it's good to see that uh, somebody has been apprehended. Yeah, uh, in terms wow. of that. that, that's unfortunate, but it's good to see things moving forward. Churches and all that kind of stuff, weird things going on here. With that yeah. being said, we'll get at the end of the show. Welcome to episode 330. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Yaka the Dean of the HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bills Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Hope you enjoyed our adjunct guest professor, if you would, Kyle T. Mosey, HBC Sports Illustrated, and many other things he does. So make sure you're checking him out as he gives you all the coverage from that Louisiana angle and HBCUs across <laughs> uh, the framework as he gets it done. Dips in here in Texas as well as he can show the Lone Star a couple of things as he covers Uh, A lot of good stuff in this general uh, Gulf Coast area, if you would, uh, in terms of the sport being framework. Again, I want to thank you for listening, Dr. Liz, 
inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be back Thursday at 6 o'clock. I will be on the road. I'll be in Las Vegas, so we'll see if we get it done. Uh, oh. I'll be in a conference. Coach Prime Effect presenting a research paper on that. Uh, as I traveled, did one at University of Texas, supposed to be going to Syracuse a couple of weeks so we can make sure folks that want to interest and understand. So they're going to bring me up. I'll come on up, pay for the travel, pay for the. <laughs> That's right. Close costs. I'll get it done. Follow me. Look forward to me next week as we discuss the latest news in the week. Lab again on Thursday. We'll get it done. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. DR K E N Y A T T A C A V I L. That's DR K E N. Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-E-I-L. Also want to talk about, if you get a chance, check out Jeff Lighty. I went on there and did some information to show uh, as he asked some questions about Coach Prime's comment about uh, postseason play. And so I provided some in-depth knowledge, framing it all the way from last week when he made the trip to Houston, talked about what that looked like and understanding when Coach Prime makes a statement oftentimes if you partial it and take every word, uh, you'll miss the bigger picture in the framework, what he did. So I bring that down. I also talk about some of the guidelines, and NCA policies. So if you're into that nerding out stuff, I break all that down so you get a better understanding of that as well. Again, dream big, continue to move forward. Uh, inside the HBC Sports Lab 1, as you know, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Like, subscribe. Make sure you follow all our shows on BCSN, my JBN, download it as well. With that being said, follow uh, inside Dream Big and continue to move forward. I should say we'll talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mosley? Always be tenacious. <laughs> Lecture. <Roy? laughs> Lecture. Dismiss. Out.